Today's topic is traditional book publishing. If you've got five minutes, I've got five tips to help you understand the process. I began my writing career in the 1980s as a freelance health and medical writer for magazines and journals. What I really wanted to do was to write a book. By the end of the 1980s, I had enough material to write a book. So I started on the process of finding a publisher for the book. At the time, there were very few options. There was no self-publishing option other than to send the manuscript to a vanity publisher who would print it, bind it in hardcover, and send me a box full of books. That's not what I wanted. I wanted a real publisher. Real publishers have distributors. So without Google for help, I began researching publishers. How did I do this? Well, the same way that writers have been doing it for years. I bought a copy of the annual Writer's Market, which is still published today, and I began doing my research and figuring out who would be a good publisher for this particular book and how I would go about doing it. Since that time, I have sold a number of other books to traditional publishers, and I've also gone the self-publication route. Along the way, I've learned quite a few things about traditional publishing, which is also referred to as legacy publishing. And I thought what I'd like to do is share with you five tips to help you through the process based on my own experience of traditional publishing. Tip number one, traditional publishers each have their own type of books that they publish. If a publisher's website says that they do not publish romance books, then they don't publish romance books. If their website says that they only publish romance books, then don't send them any other kind of book. They really mean it when they say that they focus on specific kinds of books. Also, individual editors have individual preferences, and many websites for publishers will have biographies of their individual editors, and you can study those and determine the kinds of things that that individual likes to read. If it's the kind of book that you write, then that might be a good fit for you, and that would be the editor, specific editor, to which you would send your query. Bottom line on this tip is to do your homework. Tip number two is most publishers do not accept unsolicited manuscripts. What does this mean? Well, it can mean one of two things. The first thing it can mean is that it doesn't accept unagented books, in which case you're going to have to find an agent who will then get an invitation from a publisher to send in the book. The second thing it might mean, which is better for you, is that they only accept queries. They will not accept your manuscript if you send it to them unsolicited. They will look at your query, decide whether they want to see your manuscript, and then they will invite you to send it in. The bottom line is don't send in a full manuscript until you've done your research and find out what that particular publisher wants. Tip number three, in traditional publishing houses, publishing decisions are made by editorial committees, not by individual editors. So why is this important? Well, first of all, unless the publisher is really small, like as a one woman business, then there will be an editorial committee that has to make a decision about your manuscript. Even if the editor that you've sent it to loves it, doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to publish it. There are going to be other editors on that editorial panel who all have competing projects that they'd like the publishing house to take on. But there will also be marketing people there who will decide whether or not they're going to be able to sell this publication. They have to be convinced as well. The bottom line is you need to consider all points of view when you're trying to pitch a book to a publisher. Tip number four, traditional publishing takes a long time. Be prepared to be patient. There's going to be lag time between each step along the way. And sometimes that time is going to be longer than you think it's going to be. And in the end, once a decision is made to publish your book, it could be 18 months from the time that your publisher says, yes, we will publish till the time you actually hold that book in your hand. This is not like self-publishing, not at all, where you have complete control about the timeline. In traditional publishing, you do not. Bottom line, be patient. Tip number five, 
Traditionally published authors are expected to be fully involved in the marketing of their books. Just because someone else is taking on the financial aspects of editing, formatting, cover creation, and publishing your book doesn't mean that they're going to take on all of the aspects of marketing. In fact, you will be carrying on the lion's share of the marketing for your book. To tell you the truth, in my own personal experience, marketers and publishing companies really do very little. There are some formula things that they do regarding uh, book fairs, for example, uh, in the case of a couple of books that I've published, but that's basically all they do. Every once in a while, they might put it in a catalog online as part of uh, a promotion, but the fact is that you're going to have to do specific marketing for your book. So that's the bottom line, be prepared to market your book. There is a lot more to traditional publishing than what I've just touched on in those five tips, but maybe that'll get you started and help you to understand the process a bit better. Maybe we'll talk about it again some other time. Happy writing. Subscribe to Write, Fix, Repeat, and maybe I can help you improve your writing knowledge and skills. Five tips at a time.